before we said uh, before we adjust the bias and uh, the record section of the tape machine we're going to load up the MRL and align do a reproduce alignment on the machine that's what Chico is doing right now Alright, this is our new reel of tape that we're going to be setting the machine up for. It's RMG Studio Master 468, which is similar to the old BASF 468 we hear. And when you put it on the tape machine um, so that it records back up on this reel, we're going to load it. Chica's going to show you how to do this. It comes uh, heads out. And you don't really want to store it that way. So the trick we do, you can do it another way too, but we flip it upside down just temporarily. And that way we can load it onto the supply reel. And the reason you want to do that is because when your recording is done, everything ends up on this reel, tails out. And there are um, a lot of reasons why you want to do that, but the main one is bleed. You know, tape as it's stored will print through to the next um, next piece of tape that's underneath. You know, as it's rolled in the spool, and you kind of hide, you kind of mask that error that happens of the print through when you store it tails out. If you store it heads out, you'll hear things like vocals come in or drums come in before, like the actual downbeat or like horn swells bleed through before they actually hit. Um, and that's why people don't store it heads out. That's why you store it tails out. So our tape has been rewound all the way up onto the take up reel. Chica's going to flip it upside down. And now as it records back on to, to the reel that it came on, it's going to be stored tails out. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, um, now that we are all set up to, to start the record uh, set up on the tape machine, is on our little mini radar, we're going to set um, our sine wave. We're going to, we're going to reproduce a 10K uh, sine wave at 4 dBU. Um, so that's about zero VU, I guess. Um, and what it's, you know, it, it may be too hot, so we may have to turn the 4 down to maybe 2 or 0 just to get a usable output. Next thing we got to do is we got to harm all of our tracks. So I'm going to take it out of all safe. I don't need tracks 17 through 24 since we have the 16 track head stack on. So all 16 are on. I've got it in all repro because we want to be able to monitor back while we do this off the repro head not the select re uh, reproduce head. Okay so for, now we're going to set the bias on track 2. Um, it doesn't really matter what this is reading right now. We're just looking to see where the needle starts to fall back to the left. So, what Chico's going to do is down here, there's a little bias pot. He's going to turn that bias pot to the left until the needle falls to the left. And right now it's about half a dB below zero decibels on that meter. That's where the little hinge point is for the bias. So if I turn it to counterclockwise, it starts to fall negatively. If I turn it clockwise, it gets to that 0.5, but if I continue to turn it clockwise, instead of it going zero to one and, and po in the positive direction, it'll actually start falling backwards. It's a little confusing, but it'll actually continue to fall backwards. But that's what we want. You want to fall back the amount your tape recommends. And the tape we're doing, it's about three and a, three and a half. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's about four. So we're going to over bias four. So we'll go back four dB from 0.5. Since 0.5, negative 0.5 is our hinge point, I'm going back to minus 4.5. That's right in between those two little marks there. So that's an over biasing of four dB. Okay, cool. No, dude, actually is. So first we'll rotate counterclockwise, and we'll see that needle rise up, rise up, rise up rise up and we're still going counterclockwise still going counterclockwise and right about there I'm still turning counterclockwise but it doesn't want to move and it's going to start 
going backwards. We're still going counterclockwise. So what I'm doing is rocking and finding a position where that where that needle wants to go backwards and forwards. So I'm going counterclockwise and clockwise right around what is that like 0.33 dB yeah, from where I'm sitting. Is good about enough. 0.5. So now that we know that's our hinge point, I'm not going to turn counterclockwise anymore. I'm turning clockwise because I'm adding bias energy. I'm adding uh, in the clockwise direction. I'm adding bias, and basically from that point of 0.5. I want to add 4 dB. So when I turn to the right, it's going to go negative, but I want to go negative 4 dB from that point right there. And that so would it'll be, be about minus 3.5. Minus 3.5. And, and doing this, so you go down minus 3.5, which is 4. Um, go down to minus 3.5, which is 4 from where we were. So we've effectively overbiased this channel for 4 over. So we're just setting the bias, the over bias for each of these channels. We'll go through all 16. So the next thing we're going to do is the uh, the record gain level. So for that, now that we've done our bias, I'm going to set our little deal here to 1K. We use a 1K tone for this. And we're going to do it at 4 dBU. And so now that we're doing this, we're going to... I'm going to put the machine in record, and we adjust it as we're recording and monitoring back from the repro head, which we talked about before. So you can see what's happening here. Chico is going to adjust the, see, I think it says gain on it, the record gain. We're going to just adjust the record gain until this goes up to zero. And we do that for all 16 tracks. Okay, so we've adjusted our record gain to be zero. Now we're going to uh, adjust the record EQ to be zero. So I'm going to take my little guy here, my little mini raider. I'm going to set this back to 10, 4 dBU. I'm going to put the machine into record. And again, we're monitoring on uh, the repro, off the repro head. Now Chico is going to adjust the low speed record EQ. I want to start with two since one is okay. bouncing around. Low speed record EQ. That's pretty good right now. He's going to adjust that to be zero on all these channels. And you can see right now it's a little bit below zero. And on and on down the, down the line. So we're done uh, setting the record um, EQ, and as you can see on all these, we're at zero for all these, which is what we want. We're also at zero with our record gain, and so what I do, what I'll do now, is, you know, I can kind of sweep through all of my tones here, and everything will stay fairly close to zero. I mean, it, all the analog tape heads. Are a little different. They have you know slightly different slopes, um, EQ slopes, and you can see as we get down to 200, to 160, to 125, 100. Below 100, you'll start to see that analog bump that people talk about. You'll start to see the bass get get really hot. There's 65. It jumps way up. That's some of the fatness people talk about with analog tape is just that that low end bump right there. So I'll just scroll back up. And you can see all the way up to six, even 16K is it's not too bad. And even 20K, we're still getting readable levels. So that's about it. We're done with the recorder line alignment and setup for the tape machine.